I want to show you how you can import your images into the Cross Stitch Designer software from So and So and turn your photos and other artwork into Cross Stitch charts. So, once you launch the program, hit OK. And the first thing is you have to decide what size design area you want. I want mine to be roughly A4, so I'm going to select 29 by 27 centimeters, although you could select it in stitches or inches. Um, you can choose your fabric count and your shape and then hit OK. So that is my design area. You can zoom in on that or zoom out on that. And then what I want to do is come to File and go to Import. And the first thing I'm going to show you is the Image Import Wizard, which is a sort of automatic way of turning images into charts. So you hit that and you will launch the wizard. Click on next, and then you need to find the file that you want to import. Hit select file, and then look on your computer uh, to wherever your folder of images is. And I'm going to select this lovely cat photo. Now, really important here is that you look at what file formats you've got selected, because if you've got the wrong format selected, then no items are going to come up. So my images are all JPEGs. So if I select JPEGs, they come up. I'm going to choose this cat photo and hit open. Then hit next. Now here, you're going to enter the size in stitches that you want the final stitched piece to be. So um, I want mine fairly detailed, um, but not too unwieldy. I'm going to do 70 stitches wide, and then it will automatically calculate the height of the design for me. And there's a good tip here, to get the physical size, you need to divide these values by the count of the fabric. That's a nice little tip, it helps you with that. Click next, and I can put the actual number of colours uh, that I want in my design. I can have a maximum of 199, but obviously that would be a bit crazy. So I'm going to choose 25 colours for this design, and I hit next. And then I need to uh, select the thread range that I'm using. I'm going to be using DMC Stranded Cotton. I click Next and finally Finish. And it will automatically bring my image in for me. There it is. Now I can zoom in on that. And if that jumps down, I can use my locator window to uh, scroll down onto the image. Now that's my design, but this is completely editable now. So what I can do is if I decide I want to add some stitches, I might like to put um, some little catch lights in my cat's eyes uh, to give it a bit more life. That looks very nice. I might decide that um, I want to sort of smooth the corners out on some of these lines by adding um, some fractional stitches. Uh, I can quite easily do that. Um, I can... Um, play with, with that however I like, really. Um, I could add back stitching around these. I, this is completely editable. Now, if you decide that you don't really like some of the colors, you can change those too. So let's say this is looking a little bit murky. My cat is a very brown cat, but um, if I think this brown is maybe a bit too cool, I want a warmer brown, I can just double click on that. Again, select my thread range, and it'll show me what color is currently being used. Now, I think I'd like a slightly warmer shade than that. Um, I might have a lot of this brown in my stash and I want to use it up, for example. So I just double click on the new color and close and it's replaced all of those browns with my new brown. Now, also, I might feel when I'm stitching this, that this light gray and this light gray, very, very similar. And you're not really going to get a huge amount of difference between those two. Um, so if I want to merge those colours, I can just pick up that colour, drag it on top of the other colour, and this pop-up comes up. I can swap the colours, I can copy the colours, but what I want to do is merge those colours. There we are, I've now got 24 colours in my design because I've merged those greys. Now I might decide that I want my chart to display differently to that. At the moment I've got colour blocks, but I could have that in black and white symbols only. Picks a moment to render, but you get the picture there. But for me, I think what's going to be most useful is to have it with colour blocks and black and white symbols. There we go. That looks much easier for me to stitch it from. So, and that's all there is to it, really. From there, I can print my image. I just come up here to the top to the print. 
But there are lots of options here when you come to print it. The first is the scale factor. So at the moment, this is showing as a scale factor of four to one. So it shows me down here that that is going to print out um, on two pages. Now I might decide that I want it bigger than that. I might want a scale factor of eight, in which case it would come out on three pages, or I might want to decide that, you know, I want one to one on the stitches. Um, if I just want to force it to fit to one page, I can just click on that uh, button there and it'll force it to fit on one page. Now there are lots of other options in this box. I can ask it to center it on the page. I can tell it that I want it to print center marks. Uh, there's other options too. Really important though is the type because on screen I've got it printing with color and black and white symbols. Uh, I have to actually tell it when it's printing to do the same thing. So I need to select that option, color and black and white symbols. Um, and then there's other options. I can have the grid lines printing out in different ways. I can have the back stitch printing out in different colors. So you can really play with those options. Once I've selected what I think um, I want it to look like, I can hit print preview and it will give me a preview of how my chart is going to print out. That looks very nice indeed. So then I would just hit print to print my design. Now, you notice on that print preview that it didn't print the key. You have to print the key separately. So come up here to file and select print key. And again, you get lots of options. So really um, you can have it just in color blocks. You can have it with the color blocks and the symbols, which obviously is gonna be the most helpful here. I can choose different formats for my key. I can have these larger blocks, smaller blocks, um, grid lines on them. I can have different font um, on my key if I want it. So lots and lots of options there. And then when you're happy with that, you would just click OK to print it. So that is one way of printing, uh, importing a design to use um, from an image, creating a chart from an image. Um, what I want to do is just um, come down, delete, this design because I want to show you another way. It can just take a minute to render, particularly with the color blocks. When you've got the color blocks with the symbols, um, it can take quite a quite a time to render. And let's just select all of that and delete it. And then I seem to have a little bit of cross stitch left here. Let's just select that and delete it. Right, so I've got a clear palette again and I want to show you the other way to import. So I come back to import and I select this option, image importing. Um, it's asking me, do I want to make changes? No, I don't. Here we go. So here's a whole load more options when you're coming to import. First of all, let's find my photo again. Click open. And what it's asking me here is for the size again. Now, what's helpful is down the bottom here, it will give you the finished size of the image. So um, I can play with those numbers. Let's try 75 again. I think that's what I did last time. And it will tell me the finished size of my chart. Again, I can select how many colors I want. Um, let's choose 25 again. I can select my thread range. Each time you do this, it will render a preview for you. I can adjust the brightness a little bit. If I felt mine was a bit murky last time. Um, I can also rotate the image. I can flip it. I can mirror it. I can change it to black and white or sepia. I can blur it, sharpening. There's so many options. But one of the really good ones is the crop function. So if I hit crop, I get these little crosshairs come up. And let's say I just want to stitch the eye of my cat. So there we are, I've selected just that part of the design. Now, the important thing is that you have to go then go back and change the required sizes again. So I've put 75 in, it's gonna give me an image that's 13 by 12.3 centimeters. Maybe that's a little bit big, it's come down a bit. There we go, I've got my 25 colors, everything looks good. So I'm gonna hit import. going to take a minute to do that but there we are there's my chart 
And again, that's completely editable in the same way that I showed you before. You can um, change the chart, you can change the colors, you can add stitches, you could add beads, you could add backstitch. <laughs> um, you can really have fun and, and play with your images that way. And it doesn't have to just be photos. You could import a sketch that you've done, maybe one of your kids' drawings. You could use a bit of clip art. Um, you know, the, the options are endless for importing images and turning them into cross-stitch charts. So have fun and enjoy it.